what, like, 10 to whatever. So, we don't have to worry about that. So, I usually wait a few milliseconds. I usually go with 50 milliseconds before it goes and updates, repaints. So, that way it gives the computer a little bit of a break. So it doesn't have to repaint every, like, five milliseconds and go crazy and your computer's going to explode. Um, and it still looks fine even with 50. I don't understand why people go below that. It's fine the way it is. So, <clears throat> we need to have something called a timer. And there's two timers. There's one in java.util. But the one we want is in swing. Trust me, guys. When you're making 2D computer games in Java, you're going to be typing import statements a lot. We need a lot of things from a lot of places. It's crazy. Java.swing.timer And I will show you what a timer does. Um, timer is basically Java's way of doing that pausing that I was talking about, the pausing before it, the game loop goes around again for another go. So, to make a timer object, ah, we don't need that global. We can just make it right in the constructor. Okay, so we got timer. Timer. Now we're going to call it timer Tim. There we go. Timer Tim equals new timer. Tim the timer. Timer Tim. And that takes a couple arguments, but I'll explain that in a second. Uh, and we're going to tell Tim to start. Start is a method for um, Swing's timer that, surprise, surprise, starts the timer. So, and as you can guess, there's a stop, too. There's probably other things, but I don't use anything besides start and stop, so. <clears throat> okay, so now we have our timer object, but it needs two arguments. It needs how long between ticks, so to speak, and what class, like every time the timer goes off, what class needs to do uh, what action. Um, I'll explain that better in a second. <clears throat> so, we're going to do 50 milliseconds, and we're going to say this, that is not a T. This. So basically, uh, let's see, how can I explain this? So, okay, we have a timer, right? We have a timer, it goes off every 50 milliseconds, and, you know, tick, 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 every 50 milliseconds. Okay, so, what happens when the timer goes off? How do we specify what happens? I mean, does the computer just guess? Probably not. We have to tell it uh, what to do when the timer goes off. So, <clears throat> and for that, you need an action listener class. And an action listener listens for actions. Um, I know it's a little vague and stupid, but it's true. That's why it's called an action listener. Um, and action listener goes with timers. It goes with buttons and J objects and all kinds of fancy little things. So, and I say this class because we're going to make this class an action listener right now. Hold on to your excitement. And I don't know how much you guys have done with interfaces. We're going to go into interfaces in the next game, like making our own. But Action Listener is an interface. So we are making this class in the Action Listener. It's like we are extending it. And uh, as a quick like intro, when you implement an interface, you have to have specific methods for that interface. It will not compile unless you have those methods. Um, the usual way people say it is when you implement something, you're signing a contract saying, okay, we, you can be, um, like, like, you can be an action listener, but you gotta promise me that this class is going to have these methods because these methods will be called and 
there'll be trouble if there's no methods. So, we're implementing action, uh, action listener, and action listener requires a single method, and that is public void action performed. <clears throat> there's another more preferable way to do our game loop, and I'll probably introduce you guys to that one in the next game, but uh, right now we're going to do this one because it's the easiest one to understand, I think. <clears throat> Alright, and that takes an action event. And we have to import a lot of crap because we just did a lot of stuff. <clears throat> okay, so let's see. Uh, we need action listener. That needs to be imported. And action listener is in Java dot awt dot event yes there are more subfolders within awt it's crazy and hmm, action listener I'm sorry I'm typing so slowly I'm, I'm like kinda in an awkward position here as I'm recording this and we need Import Java dot awt dot event. See, I told you guys we're gonna be using this crap a lot. Action event. Swinging awt will become your best friend. Okay, so we have the classes we need to know about. So, all right, back to the timer. So when the timer goes off, the timer needs to know, okay, uh, whose action perform method do I call when our timer goes off? Uh -huh, and we're saying this class, because this class is an action listener, and therefore this class has action performed, because it has to, it's under contract. So the timer goes off every 50 milliseconds, yeah, yeah, tick, 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 tick. Every time it goes off, the timer calls action performed. And the code with an action performed is run. And then when the timer goes off again, 50 milliseconds later, action performed is run again and again and again and again. And it gets really tired after a while and really pissed off. No, I'm just kidding. But action performed is the method we need to use to do our uh, game loop. Um, so in the next action, we'll probably... Uh, do some of the logic for the player on the ball, and then we'll come back to here periodically to update some things. Uh, but that's going to be it for now.